On today's episode, we take a six mile hike on the famous Yearling Trail in Ocala National Forest. The Yearling Trail boasts an amazing amount of Florida history and takes us back to an era long gone. In the 1840s, a man named Patrick Smith established a settlement here on Pat's Island. Pat's Island was named so by the early settlers here because the longleaf pine forest was surrounded by a thick layer of scrub and sugar sand. At its peak in the early 1900s, the town had about 12 families living here. They used this land to hunt, fish, farm, and trade moonshine with people nearby traveling by boat on the St. John's River. It was this way that they would carve out a meager but honorable living among the scrub. At the time, the town had a church, school, and post office, and by the 1930s, only two people were left, Calvin and Mary Long. When author Marjorie Keenan Rawlings heard of this, she was so interested in their stories, she traveled this trail to their homestead in October of 1933 to hear the tales for herself. These stories inspired her to write The Yearling, a Pulitzer Prize winning novel that eventually became so popular, Hollywood came to Florida. A yearling who gets into all sorts of mischief. That settles it. That deer has got to go. Go on! And don't you ever go back! Don't you ever! The Yearling movie was filmed right here on this trail, and it tells the true story, as once told by Calvin Long, of a boy who raises a young fawn and faces the difficulty of life in the scrub. Today, the Yearling Trail still remains as one of the most popular trails in Ocala National Forest. This episode is full of history, views, and adventure. So come along. Let's hike. What's going on everybody? Bearded Hikes out here on the Yearling Trail in the Ocala National Forest. A really good day for a hike. A lot of history here, so I'm going to take you guys on this trail. Stay tuned. So what makes this trail so special to me is when I was about 10 years old, before I knew I had an interest in hiking or the wilderness or anything, I had a couple family friends take me here and we did the entire hike. And that was when I realized that I have like a supreme love for the forest and wilderness and being outdoors. And this is the first time I've been back. I'm almost 30 years old now, so it's been about 20 years since I've hiked this trail. I'm really excited to get it going. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a very cute little bunny. I just scared the holy bejeebus out of it, but. <laughs> so cute. Well, we've been walking for probably about 10 minutes now and we've come across this awesome sign that says, hike naked. Now, I don't know if I would take that advice, but it is definitely something to, uh, think about while you're walking. You know, as we hike through these scrublands and stuff, it's really interesting to think about that there at one time was a whole community back here with a school and a church, and then eventually there was only two people, which inspired the story of the yearling. Now, we've been hiking for probably 20 minutes or so, and we've reached the edge of the forest. The first mile of the hike is in the sun, and the last mile of the hike is in the sun, so everything after that is tree coverage. So we're just hitting a break here in the scrub and we're going to pick it back up in the forest real soon. All right, so we're taking a walk into the longleaf pine forest on our way to Pat's Island here. Now we're actually going on a steady downhill trek very slightly, almost not noticeable. But we are on our way to see a cattle vat. Now in the early 1900s, late 1800s, there was an epidemic sweeping across the state from Texas to Florida. There was a parasitic tick that was unfortunately killing cattle. So the Florida Agricultural Board recommended that you uh, use arsenic and other really harsh chemicals and you pour it into a big vat and then you would walk your cattle through it. Coming here to marker number two, first thing you notice is this wood sticking out of the ground, and then beyond that, you have this concrete structure. Now, you can see there are stairs that lead down into it. Originally though, this whole vat would have been filled with an arsenic type of solution, and the cattle would go in and it would be filled all the way up to here. The cattle would walk through and it would kill that parasitic tick. Now today, you can see that the cattle vat is probably seen better days and has some slush of just Florida rainfall debris down there, but it is still really cool. And it's something that signifies uh, an era of history that's gone. So when you're hiking this trail and you come across this, it is very cool to just kind of think about how important this was back in the day, especially to somebody who had cattle. This was a lifeline. Today, it just sits here in the middle of the woods. Well, we just left the cattle vat and we're on our way to the third marker, which dictates where the old sinkhole was that the town's residents would use to get water and the kids would play in it.
So we've been walking for about 90 minutes now, coming down Jody's Trace here, and you can see on the pole it says uh, SR19. That's the state road that we started on. Coming up through here, we hit a junction in the trail. Really important part of the trail here. You can go this way and shorten your hike to three and a half miles, or you can go this way and you can do the full hike of five and a half miles. So we're obviously going to keep doing the five and a half mile hike, but if you get to this point and you're winded and you feel like you can't make it the rest of the way, you can actually shorten your hike significantly by heading in this direction. Beyond this pole, though, have a really cool spot here. You hear the birds tweeting away. This is an old sinkhole, and the town's residents, when there was a town here, would have come here to collect water and play. Today it's all dried up and you are actually allowed to go down in there if you can find a way down, but just standing up here, we're looking at about a 50 foot drop and extremely tall incline. So probably best to just view this one from a distance. In the late 1800s early 1900s this whole sinkhole would have been filled up with water and it would have been considerably more open than it is now well we just took a break over at the old sinkhole where the townsfolk would get their water and the kids would play now we're headed in the direction of the florida trail and we are going to see our next mark on the map whatever that may be Got some really cool looking tree formations here that kind of snake their way across the trail. My wife said it reminded her of like Seuss land, something in, from a Dr. Seuss book, but very cool. Yeah, to see something like this. Looks and like they were uh, part of a controlled burn. Yeah, definitely was part of a controlled burn, but it's definitely interesting when you look at how these branches grew and in the random directions that they decided to grow in. Here's another one coming up here on the edge of the trail. They almost look fake. That's how cool they look. Let's check, a, check out some of this bark and you can see how it just kind of twists. The pattern of the bark just twists all the way down to form this amazing tree. Pretty cool. That's awesome. So we just hit number eight here, post number eight, and we're at the home stretch of the trail. Continuing past the post will reveal a historical site, or at least what little is left of the historical site, which used to be Calvin Long's homestead. This right here is actually not where the house used to be, but where a cistern used to be. Now a cistern would have been a large pit. Actually, as I'm saying it, you can just see the edge of the cistern here. It would have been filled with water and the cistern would have collected rainwater to allow for flushing of plumbing. So you would be able to flush a toilet or use a sink or whatever all the way out here in the brush. Today, this uh, fence post just kind of dictates the edge of the cistern and what little is left of it. Well, we're about halfway back to the car now on the home stretch, probably about 30 minutes away from where we found that old cistern. And there is a sign here with another path. So we're gonna follow this way and it should lead us to the old Long Family Cemetery. Now there are original 
family members buried here in the cemetery from the founding of the small community out here. And still today, their gravestones are visible and protected, which is really nice and usually not always the case, especially with cemeteries in the middle of the woods. Coming down this short path here, we were met with a fence that looks like it was recently built. And here we have the Long Family Cemetery. Now it looks like you are allowed to enter, respectfully, so we're gonna go ahead and check out some of these gravestones in here and make sure that we treat everything with respect. Leave it as we found it. We'll start on the left. And all these gravestones have a lot of very thin writing on them, but I'll do my best to read some of these names. Looks like Ella Rogers, uh, James Rogers, Uncle Jim, daughter of Jim and May. Those are the first two here. Next one says, Harvey Rogers, son of Jim and Mary, died early 1900s, accidental death. What does that say? Clothes caught fire while playing around fire. Ah, so this, unfortunately, Harvey Rogers was playing around a fire and his clothes caught fire and he burned to death. Very sad. And these are all just relatives and family members. Annie H., wife of C.C. Long, I'm assuming Calvin Long, born December 1876, died 1900. And you can just kind of see how far down this goes. Sarah Jane Long, born April 4th, 1837, died August 12th, 1909. And you can see the top part of this grave here has, uh, looks like it's broken off and uh, some people have left pennies and stuff. We have a couple hollow point nine millimeter rounds at the top, which is kind of like a Southern thing. Leave a bullet on top of the grave couple 380s. It's kind of cool though. All the way out here, they're still buried to this day. Alright, we're going to head back to the car now. I've been walking out here for probably three and a half, four hours now. Make sure we close this behind us. like that until next time headed back to the car here I couldn't help but notice this awesome like it looks like a bow and arrow but it's a tree this is pretty common out here this is usually caused when something grows in a spot where the Sun's not hitting it fully and as it starts to grow it adapts to the way that the Sun changes in its light the way that the angle of the Sun hits the tree and the tree will naturally grow curved now unfortunately one day what will happen is the tree will bow under the weight, especially at an angle like this. These trees get rained on and when the trail floods over, the root system is just weak. So a lot of the times you'll find it, like this one here in the back, just toppled over. Um, but as it stands right now, it is something that is really cool to see. Just this big curved tree. Well guys, that was awesome. We got to see an old cattle vat, a first for me, the old cistern, and the long family cemetery. Sure was a treat at the end of a long hike to just be able to stand in that shade and kind of think about all these people that used to live here and the history that 
they leave behind, the legacy behind them. I hope that you guys had a great time today. I hope that you got a sense of adventure and wonder out of this video. And I hope that if you were interested in maybe taking this trail, this gave you a good idea as to what you might be able to expect out here. So thanks for joining. Hope to see you on the next episode. Peace.